Hi everyone, my name is Emily, as you all probably know, and welcome to my senior project presentation about how film can change lives. So, as many of you know, I am a filmmaker, and I believe that filmmaking has the ability to make an impact on the world. And to me, that's kind of the entire point of filmmaking, and that's why it's my um, just way to communicate the messages that I want to spread. And next year, I'm going to the RTF program at UT to major in filmmaking, which is really exciting. And um, my dream is to one day be a director that empowers women and other underrepresented communities in the film industry and also to get to travel the world. So for the past four years, I've been interning and working with a program called the Youth Cinema Collective, which is a part of the company Creative Action. And Creative Action strives to raise up communities that are underrepresented and to teach young people about activism in their communities. This is us on our fall retreat. That's me falling down the slide. <laughs> Um, and it's a paid internship. I went for two times a week for two hours, all four years of high school from seven to nine. So pretty late. Um, and we make, make movies about the things that we care about, which is really fun. And um, it's just a really great opportunity to get to meet other people that love film, just like me. And it was just a really great experience. So the way we work in YCC is we get to make short films in smaller groups in the fall and then larger films in the spring semester. So for three years out of the four I've been there, I've directed a short film in the fall that is one way or another focused on the topic of domestic violence. Um, as a survivor myself, it felt like a really important topic to talk about and one that was close to my heart and something that I could really share my experience with. And here's us in our most recent film shoot at Rotten and we had a special guest and it was pretty fun. So my freshman year, I made a film called Wounded. And this is all, these are all my fall films. I'm not gonna talk specifically about the spring films because I was more just like helping in those films, but the films that I directed with the collective were made in the fall. So this first one is called Wounded. And it was my first film to ever really officially direct. And I wanted to experiment with the idea of how other people's actions can have an effect on us individually. So the film features a young girl who, as people are continually mean to her, begins to develop wounds all over her body. And these wounds are meant to represent the wounds on the inside that most of the time other people can't see, but often make up who we are. And I really wanted to try getting a look that made it seem as though the camera was going around and around and each scene blends together. So it kind of looks like one shot. It looks like it's all in one shot. And in fact, because of this, we almost named the movie Clockwork, but instead, decided against it at the last minute and wanted to call it Wounded to focus on the wounds. And I also scored this movie, so I made the music for it. And it in fact actually won Best Music at Austin Youth Film Festival in 2017. And it was really my first time experimenting with um, visceral feeling in filmmaking and kind of experimental filmmaking. And that would kind of later on become my niche and something that I would really love. Um, my sophomore year is when He Didn't Mean To came into fruition. Um, the title, as one may deduce, is ironic, and it's meant to imply what the main character is feeling, but knows isn't true on the inside. So for this film, I wanted to focus on the feeling of what it's like to be in an abusive relationship and to give that perspective to an audience who may never have been through something like that, or just to be relatable to those who have gone through an experience like that. And again, I wanted to experiment with representing the internal via an external metaphor. So I thought, what shows what it feels like to almost be eaten away at, because that's kind of like what it feels like to be in a bad relationship. And so I thought, perhaps cannibalism might be an interesting way to portray that. Um, so in this movie, the main character slowly gets eaten alive by her boyfriend. It's very bloody. Um, and I really wanted to shock and disturb my audience. And I ended up making it pretty bloody and gory. So it was really fun to get to experiment with making the audience just feel something like really intense. And when I screened this movie, people were shocked, disgusted, like, oh, it was just so fun. And it was also really fun to shoot. We had a lot of moments on set when we were like cringing a little bit, even though we knew it was gonna happen. And um, as a fun fact, to make lots and lots of fake blood, chocolate syrup and food dye is typically a good way to go, we learned because we have lots of blood in this movie. And also having a fantastic makeup crew really helps. 
And my junior year, I was elected to become a peer leader of the group, which was a great opportunity to learn how to be a leader and get to be sort of behind the scenes in the filmmaking process. So I was basically the role of a producer. And I helped decide which films would get chosen for the fall. So I didn't get to direct a film that year because I would probably end up choosing my own film. <laughs> But I got the chance to overlook and watch the films get made and just help be an overall guide, help the younger members of the collective and kind of show them what I learned and just integrate into the group. And I also got to go to events representing the collective and it was a really great learning opportunity and helped me build some connections with all kinds of people. And I got to represent YCC at events and just kind of be an overall leader of the group. And then this year, I directed my third and final film of the collective, which is Rotten. And I co-directed this film with my friend, Mariana Tolomash, and together we built the world we both envisioned for this film. So sharing our experiences with one another helped us come up with the movie we wanted to create. And ultimately decided we decided to make the film about the aftermath of a bad relationship because we feel like that's not very often talked about and how it can leave long lasting effects even into new relationships. And so because this is the stage that both she and I are in, we kind of had similar experiences. Um, we felt like we could express it well through our own experience. And so the film features a girl who, after trying to experiment with her boyfriend, ends up getting triggered into this horrible flashback. And we wanted to have lots of surprising and disruptive imagery to shock our audience. And again, kind of playing with that shock factor. And also just to give them a look into what a real flashback is really like. And we also wanted to portray all the side effects of being someone who's been in an abusive relationship, um, such as feelings of guilt and unworthiness and shame. And what was really cool about this film is I got to use the skills I've cultivated over the years, such as cinematography and directing skills, and really put them into use with this film, especially co-directing had its own sets of challenges, but was also really fun. And another cool thing was that this entire, the, most of the entire crew was directed and just created by women. and. I really feel proud of this one, and I think it was a really great last film to make with the collective. So what YCC has taught me is, well, it's definitely changed my life for the better. I've learned so much, not only about filmmaking and film theory, but also just who I am in the world and as a filmmaker. Um, I've made connections that I will always hold on to, and I've made some really amazing long-lasting friendships that I know I can always count on. And the YCC community is one that I know I can count on and always be a part of, even as I graduate. And that's helped me process so much from the first day I walked into the room. The films I was making at the time for each year really reflected what I was going through, like in my real life. And so in a way, these films were almost my therapy and it was so empowering to get to share my experience and be so supported by the group. And for that, I will always be grateful. And I also got to make so many important connections with local filmmakers. I got to go to film festivals and talk to professionals of all kinds. And YCC was just full of amazing opportunities. And it's really a great place to go if you wanna be a filmmaker. So I highly recommend it if you are thinking about joining a group. So what comes next for me? I'm already in the works of some new films and I've made lots of other films outside of the collective as well. I've made documentaries, I've made shorts, I've made features all on my own. And as my skills and experiences continue to morph and grow, my filmmaking will grow and change undoubtedly. So I'm starting to move in the opposite direction that I've been going, which is making happier films and maybe even comedies and just to challenge myself and to see where that takes me. And I'm really excited to see where college goes and getting to go to the RTF program at UT. I'm so excited for that. It's one of the best film schools in the world. And Austin is a really great city to be in as a filmmaker. So I'm really excited to stay here as this film scene is up and coming. And there's just so much to explore in the film world. And I will always continue to make films because ultimately it's what I love, it's what I do, and I would think it's who I am. So if you want to see any more of my work or watch any of the films that I've mentioned today in the slideshow, go to emilysteinbomber.com. I have a website and check it all out. I have a lot of films on there, all the films that I mentioned today and also ones that I've made on my own. There's a lot of photography on there. I've really started to experiment with taking photography on my 35 millimeter camera. 
And yeah, just check it out if you'd like. So as a filmmaker, we're always looking to see what our audience thinks and to create dialogues about our work and an impact. So instead of just diving right into questions, I wanted to ask you guys a few questions first and hopefully create a bit of a dialogue about what I've talked about today, kind of like a film panel. Um, so feel free to just like say it or put it in the chat. But the first question I really have for you guys is, um, what does activism mean to you? And I'm wondering how I can access the chat. There we go. So if you guys have any answers, just like shout them out or just put them in the chat. Like Emily, just yeah. amazing. This was amazing. You really had me teared up. Um, so activism to me is um, trying to get a place on the at the table as a woman and as a woman of color. And um, I just think your your film trilogy, it seems, is just brilliant because it does empower women so much um, and people who have been in abusive relationships. So just wonderful work. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of really good answers here. Speaking up for what you believe in, elevating voices, yes, definitely taking actions to make the world a better place. Definitely, I would, I would agree with you guys. That is definitely what activism means to me. Yeah, activism is such an important part of my life and I think probably for a lot of you guys too, so that's awesome. And then my final discussion question for you guys is um, how can you use art to express how you feel? How do you use art to express how you feel? So it can be any like mode of art, whether you paint or you take photos or you write, like how do you use art to express how you feel and kind of like what's going on in your life? So feel free to just put it in the chat. Music, yes, me too, Julia, all the way. Jack says writing fiction. Cooking, that's a good one. Yeah, processing feelings when they don't make sense. I totally agree. Art is an outlet for emotion and everything that you're going through on the inside. And I think it's really therapeutic to get to create things into art. Sharing so that you know you're not alone. Yeah, that's a really big part of it. That's that's kind of why I made a lot of these films was that I wanted to kind of say to other people who've gone through similar experiences, like, it's okay, this is, this is how it is, and you're not alone in this. Listening to music, music is so impactful. Yeah, any kind of creation, definitely, totally agree. And sometimes it doesn't even look like me being super, you know, conventional in your art. Sometimes it looks like just throwing paint at a wall or something, or I don't know, stomping on the grass. I mean, that might, that could even be considered art. I don't know. But I think importantly, art is, is in, a, in a very important outlet. And for me, that's what filmmaking is. So great answers, you guys. And lastly, I uh, just want to know if you guys have any questions. Well, I mean, here's one. It just that was so that was a pretty awesome presentation. Like, yeah, kind of sucks that there's still a lot of sexism going on in the industries these days. Totally. Yeah, and all, and also I think yeah, TV shows I think I can use to like express some of some of the messages of like giving opportunities to everyone and also helping the environment because it sucks that some people just treat are just like wanting to pollute the pollute the world, which honestly those people should be people should be just rotting in hell for saying that. Yeah, well definitely I think that it's a good it's a good outlet. You like TV shows, movies, anything like that. Rudy, do yeah. you have a question? I do. <clears throat> I wanted to first of all, what incredible work. And I think that, you know, like we're, we're in the golden age of sociological horror now. And I think that like, you've done a brilliant job of, of tapping into the, that zeitgeist uh, artistically. And with that in mind, I wanted to ask you, um, who are the, the filmmakers that you look up to that you consider big influences? 
um, that you taught that you get passionate about? Oh my gosh, so many. <laughs> um, I I take a lot of inspiration from Wes Anderson's work. I think his stuff is really cool. I kind of want to go more in that direction. Um, Greta Gerwig right now is one of my favorites. Love her. Um, Sofia Coppola, just any badass female director, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. Craig, do you have a question? Yeah, I was wondering, how do you learn like the the vulnerability required to um to make art collaboratively because like this is an amazing process and all these films are so like beautiful and awesome and cool um but i feel like it would be really scary to like make them in a group where you have to put those emotions out there so how do you do that yeah thank you <laughs> um it is hard it's it's hard to like talk about it at all it's a really i think vulnerable subject um, as the years have gone by, I think it, it becomes easier, especially if you're an advocate, because you want to share your story and so that people, other people can feel like they can share their stories. Um, but yeah, that freshman year when I made that first film, I definitely was shy. I was kind of like, um, this is a little personal <laughs> and um, that's, that's a little awkward. And, um, but honestly, just if you have a really strong sense of community with the people that you're making this with. I think um, YCC has just felt like family to me, so it feels like I can kind of say whatever. Um, and kind of especially because I kind of shared something so deep. Um, but in a way, everyone kind of did because we were all making movies about things that directly affected us. And so just having a really strong sense of community, I think, is important when it comes to being so vulnerable and creating art like this together. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, I mean, so it's like, it's quite amazing to think that you're going to the film industry. Like, I wonder if you'll will be able to work for any big companies, honestly. If That's the hope. That's the dream. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. It's just